I believe that we still want to be entertained, diverted, and given an occasional break from 24-7 CNN, Corona News Network. In fact, I'd like to know how to flatten the curve of emails flooding my inbox on, quote, how we're handling the COVID-19 virus, end quote. That said, we acknowledge this is a serious issue. This episode is about how wineries and restaurants have been impacted by the coronavirus and what we can do to support them while still maintaining our safety and health. I'm not suggesting that you visit wineries and restaurants as many are closing temporarily. However, you can support them when they reopen. And right now, you can buy wine online or if restaurants are answering their phones, buy gift certificates for future use so they still have some cash flow. Do you have a thirst to learn about wine? Do you love stories about wonderfully obsessive people, hauntingly beautiful places, and amusingly awkward social situations? Well, that's the blend here on the Unreserved Wine Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Natalie McLean, and each week I share with you unfiltered conversations with celebrities in the wine world, as well as confessions from my own tipsy journey as I write my third book on this subject. I'm so glad you're here. Now pass me that bottle, please, and let's get started. Welcome to episode 69. This episode, like most, is based on a Facebook Live video chat I hosted recently. However, this one is different. I had to settle my own internal debate as to whether to do it at all. So I asked myself three questions. Number one, do you look like an insensitive jerk if you talk about anything except the coronavirus these days? My take? Not necessarily. Number two, Can you talk about wine in a time when it feels like a frivolous luxury? Of course. And number three, are jerks ever sensitive? Never. (laughs) I believe that we still want to be entertained, diverted, and given an occasional break from 24-7 CNN, Corona News Network. In fact, I'd like to know how to flatten the curve of emails flooding my inbox on, quote, how we're handling the COVID-19 virus, end quote. That said, we acknowledge this is a serious issue. This episode is about how wineries and restaurants have been impacted by the coronavirus and what we can do to support them while still maintaining our safety and health. I'm not suggesting that you visit wineries and restaurants as many are closing temporarily. However, you can support them when they reopen. And right now, you can buy wine online, or if restaurants are answering their phones, buy gift certificates for future use so they still have some cash flow. Deb Harris of Uncorked Wine Tours in the Okanagan emailed me after the Facebook Live to say, that as a wine tour operator, she suffered from cancellations and doesn't want to look like the bad guy by giving full credits instead of full refunds. But as she notes, bankruptcy for a business such as hers is always but a mass hysteria way. Further, she notes, anyone in the hospitality business knows the importance of hygiene. We have ramped up our efforts and limited points of contact. Our tours will continue as long as we are healthy and our vehicles are disinfected from stem to stern. They're all equipped with the necessary wipes and cleaning products. And she adds, don't give in to mass hysteria. Before I move on with the recorded show, I wanted to share a few more wine-related newsy bits with you. Apparently, many news stations reported that an Australian couple who are quarantined on a cruise ship off the coast of Japan due to COVID-19, had wine delivered to them by drone. The article read, quote, Jane and Dave Binskin from Queensland have documented their journey of boredom and booze while stranded on the Diamond Princess ship off the coast of Tokyo for the past week. The couple then reached out to the Naked Wine Club and, much to their delight, received two bottles of Pinot Noir that were delivered to their cabin door by drone, end quote. 
Sadly, this was debunked as a prank story from an Australian radio station on their social media channel. Wishful thinking. Sounded neat at the time. (laughs) Meanwhile, in other news, spitting or expectorating your wine when tasting is a necessary practice among professional wine critics. Not just because we'd be plastered after tasting, drinking 50 wines, or so, but also to maintain our critical faculties in evaluating wine. But the question is, is this still safe during this time? According to Felicity Carter in an excellent article in Wine Business International, the risk of transmitting an infection to someone else through saliva is actually relatively low. According to Michael Benninger, a doctor at the Cleveland Clinic. Felicity's suggestion for those concerned about this at wineries is to have freestanding spittoons, plastic-lined bins, or individual cups, rather than small spittoons that you have to reach over people to spit into. The people who empty them should be protected too, she adds, with rubber gloves and hand sanitizer. Something to think about. I'm recording this intro on March 17th, and things are changing daily. So take that into context as you listen to these recommendations and insights, as well as those to follow. This conversation itself, the recorded part, first aired on Facebook Live March 11th. So occasionally you'll hear me respond to viewer questions and comments. You can join that conversation every second Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, including this evening, if you're listening to this podcast on the day it's published, March 25th. I'll put a link where you can find us in the show notes, as well as links to the stories I mentioned in the video version of this conversation at nataliemclean.com forward slash 69. With any worldwide scare or tragedy, I believe there's still room for humor, distraction, and the communal feeling that wine inspires when we gather around the kitchen table or the virtual one. That is the feeling we have among my online course students when we gather to taste wine regularly online. We may be logging in from Toronto, New York, Amsterdam, or Edinburgh, but now more than ever, we feel connected. We still want to learn about wine in a fun and welcoming community, but we also love the comfort and safety of our own homes. I invite you to taste and feel what that's like in my free online class on pairing food and wine at nataliemclean.com forward slash class. Pick a time and day that work for you, and you can share some wine with me at my virtual table, where you're always welcome. In 1665, Cambridge University in the UK sent everyone home because of the bubonic plague. A student there, Isaac Newton, quarantined himself in his parents' home. During that time, he discovered calculus and the laws of motion. This, too, can be a time of learning and regeneration for you. Okay, on with the show. I wanted to share with you some interesting facts and trends and things that are happening in the industry, but also I want to hear from you. What news have you heard about the coronavirus in your community? And what's your reaction to it? Are you worried? I hope you're staying calm no matter what. Is it changing anything wine or food related for you? Are you dining out less often or does it have no impact? Are you stocking up on wine and toilet paper? Oh my goodness. Have you seen the rush on toilet paper? I went to Loblaws the other day, our grocery store, one whole aisle was empty. It's crazy. Just insane. I don't know why the rush on toilet paper and not some other things. Purell, I can understand, but toilet paper? Come on. I would grab Pinot Noir before toilet paper. I won't go down that rabbit hole. Anyway, Lynn, buying as much Barolo as I can. So Lynn, is that associated at all with the coronavirus or you're just stocking up on Barolo? I am going to take a sip. So Lori is one of my core students, and this is the wine we're going to be tasting. Bourgoyne, it is a beautiful wine. So after this Facebook Live, Lori and my other core students, including Guyane and David and Dwayne, we shall be gathering in our private Facebook group for a tasting 
of not only that Burgundy, but also a Bontira Zinfandel, a Murphy Good Merlot. These are such good wines for the money, I think. And a really special Burgundy from Givry. So, students, stay tuned for more details on those. I'm in Ottawa, as many of you know, so we have not had a confirmed case yet, but I am hearing about some cases in the greater Toronto area, I think. I'm heading to Toronto tomorrow, actually, because I'm going to be on Global's morning show, and we're talking about the price of wine and that sort of thing. It's a lighthearted topic. But yeah, you start to think twice about travel and dining out. I mean, personally, I'll share with you what my approach is right now. I am staying calm, of course, listening to vetted news sources, which often does not include the internet, unless it's from a reputable source. But my partner, Miles, and I are still dining out as we usually do. We are just washing our hands like crazy. That's all. And, you know, doing some of that personal distancing. I know these are such weird terms, aren't they? But we're avoiding shaking hands. And I don't know if you saw Jimmy Fallon on The Late Show. There's now the foot shake. So you just tap feet, shoes. Anyway, it's bizarre. So, yeah, in terms of precautions, that's what we're doing. We'd already taken some personal travel to Florida and Turks and Caicos. So we have not planned any more travel But I am still going to travel back and forth to Toronto when I need to be on TV. I'm not going to be dissuaded from that until I hear an official health advisory not to do that. But there is news in the wine world about how the coronavirus is starting to have a more serious impact. And I wanted to share some of those details with you. But I'd love to hear from you. Are you changing your dining out habits, your wine buying habits, your travel to wine regions? Is anything changing? Or are you just sort of in a wait and see mode? Are you going to events anymore? Tastings, winemaker dinners? Gian says, so far no changes besides eating more at home and nodding to people instead of shaking hands. I like the foot touch wave, yes. So let me share some of the info with you then about what I'm hearing in the wine industry about what's happening. But please, in the meantime, have a sip. Relax, breathe. Let's everybody stay calm, right? Mm. This Bourgogne, oh my goodness. I cannot wait to jump into that in the course uh, session. Okay, let me share with you some of the details that I've been reading. First of all, some of the silly stuff. So I'm sure you've heard by now that a poll found that 38% of people thought Corona beer causes or is linked to coronavirus. And that's just silly, right? (laughs) Oh my gosh. How can people even think that? But anyway, not true. Fake news. But here's an interesting thing that I came across as I was doing my research for our session today. There are a lot of people starting to use certain brands of vodka to wash their hands, thinking that's more sanitary. In particular, Tito's Vodka, which is an Austin, Texas-based vodka, has been selling out in liquor stores in Texas. And they've been trying to convince people on social media, it's actually not preferable to hand sanitizers like Purell. The alcohol by volume is only 40%. And so apparently hand sanitizer to be effective needs to be 60% alcohol to kill viruses, especially those that make up the coronavirus, or I'll just call it COVID-19. Because as you know, the coronavirus is a collection of viruses. So COVID-19 needs a much stronger dose of alcohol. So of course, some people are turning to things like Bacardi rum, which is over 60% and others. But I don't know. I just found that a little bit of silly info that I'd share with you. Elaine says, I'm a member of the Ontario Wine Society and Niagara chapter of the International Wine and Food Society. And so far, our schedule events are going ahead. All right. That's good to hear, Elaine. Lori says her trip to California wineries in early April is still in the works. Trip to Paris. Okay. Interesting, Lori. London and Amsterdam, April 30th to May 12th is still on at this point. Okay. So you're not canceling those plans. Interesting. 
Elaine says, we are experiencing a noticeable drop in numbers at our winery. You are between the lines, right? Ah, that's interesting. People are not going to the tasting rooms. That's something else I've been reading about in response to the coronavirus. Jim says, went to a Leafs game with 20,000 others. No issue. Wash your hands was the key. Yes, absolutely. And just wash them frequently. There's a good video on uh, CTV's Your Morning. And they say, wet your hands first, then put the soap on, withdraw from the water. That's when you do 15 to 30 seconds, not in the water, then wash them off. And you want to get under the nails and you want to get in here. Anyway, public health service message for you, free, but it's really important. Dwayne says, we have Chateau Raspali 2011 and Blind Creek Collective consensus from the Okanagan. Tell us about those wines, Duane. Those are interesting choices. Rick Delderis, hello from Los Gatos. Enjoying a 2015 Testarosta Pinot Noir from Santa Lucia Highlands, Doctor's Vineyard. No events over 250 people in the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. I used to be in the high-tech industry. I used to work at a computer company. I was always based in Canada, but the uh, campus or the main office was where Google is today. So it was in Mountain View, California. So I still have friends in high tech. And what they're saying is that the streets of San Francisco are empty. It must be spooky and a little concerning. Meanwhile, in Beijing, from China, we're getting, I think, more positive responses in terms of seemingly, if the facts are real, they're containing it there. But Beijing restaurants are empty. The streets are empty, and there's also rules in Italy, which is now a contained zone, that if you go to a restaurant, you have to be three feet away from the person. In Beijing, you need to, there's a maximum of three people per table. So there's some real impacts in addition to business plummeting. So Jane Staple is, is here. She says, I'm glad I traveled so much last year. Just putting travel on hold right now, there's always the cottage. Very smart choice, Jane. Tony Schaefer is here. Just returned from Napa Vintner Wine Tour in Los Angeles. Well attended. Well, that's interesting. Janet says, I flew into San Francisco last night. Pretty empty plane, I'll bet. This morning, the nearby mall and the public transit were also void of many people. Still hoping to get in some wineries while we're here. That's good, Janet. I'm glad you're going to do that. I'm going to take another sip of this wonderful Bourgogne that many of you have, especially my core students, since we'll be tasting this afterwards in our private Facebook group. But I just need to uh, take another sip. It's like pausing for station identification, right? All right. But I'm going to share some more details and facts from the industry. Wine, restaurant travel, what's happening right now in response to the coronavirus. All right, here we go. Restaurateurs in some of the U.S. cities that are reporting higher incidence of corona are saying that their business is down up to 50%. And it's interesting, in New York City, the Modern, which is associated with the Modern Museum in New York, they are owned by Danny Meyer, who is just famous in the world of restaurants. They apparently had a diner who tested positive for COVID-19, And they shut down the restaurant for a whole day and did a top-to-bottom sanitizing. Interesting. If any of you are in the high-tech industry, as I used to be, you know that South by Southwest was canceled in Austin, Texas. That apparently brings in $350 million to that local economy. So that's got to be hard, especially on the restaurant industry, who would depend on that. And then meanwhile... In terms of wine events, if any of you are familiar with some of the more major wine events, like Pro Wine in Germany, Vinitaly in Italy, of course, they've been canceled. It's kind of major, major, major. There was a raw natural wine event in London canceled, of course. And even the En Primeur, the tasting of the new Bordeaux vintage that involves about 6,000 key wine buyers and journalists. That's supposed to happen March 30th to April 2nd, I believe. But you can imagine the impact on Bordeaux, although Bordeaux doesn't seem to have problems selling itself through. But 
again, you know, that event has been going on formally or informally for about 200 years now. And now they're saying that it might not happen this year. Deb says she's got Garzon Albarino from Uruguay. Lovely Zippy found it at the Vancouver Wine Festival. I need to get there. And Alana McLeod, she said she went to Italy last year, loved finding Brunello by the glass. What a luxury, eh, Alana? Oh my goodness. Let me share some more deets with you that I've been uh, researching. So in China, they're calling virtual tastings now over the internet, like what we're doing, cloud wine tastings, and tasting in the cloud, so to speak, which makes a whole lot of sense. So, you know, some of that news is pretty gloomy, but I just loved the optimist who said, well, people are staying home, they're cocooning, there's not as many celebrations right now, weddings, group gatherings, reunions, anniversaries, birthdays, but let's hope there's a baby boom in nine months. They're hoping for a new raft of children to be born in nine months as a result. So that's pretty optimistic, I'd say. <laughs> Jane says, last summer, while in Finland, I discovered a couple of wines made from forest berries, one made from lingonberries and the other made from blueberries. How interesting. Excellent. In Croatia, last November, I fell in love with Plavik Mali. Plavik Mali, is that the one that they first thought could be Zinfandel or it is Zinfandel? Because there's Primitivo, which is Italian. And there's Plavik Mali. I'm not sure if it was since proven or disproven to be a clonal cousin of California Zinfandel. And of course, in our group tonight, our group private tasting for students, we are going to be looking at this amazing Zinfandel, biodynamic and organic from Bontira. Greg says, I'm a wine exporter from Australia and sales are non-existent in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea. This is for two reasons, but the main reason is that the offices in these countries are closed. People are being compelled to work from home and, let me see, this is very interesting, compelled to work from home. And more importantly, there are no containers available to pack the wines to export. Oof. So make no bones about the impact on the Australian wine industry. You know, that's a great point, Greg. You know, it's not just a matter of, can the winery still produce the wine? It's If demand plummets because you can't export or no one's going to restaurants and buying the wine, then definitely the impact is real. Add to this the fires in eastern Australia and the extremely dry conditions, and 2020 will not be the greatest year for much of the country. Wow. However, I might add that not all of Australia is smoke-affected. This was a very strong misconception and was one of the main questions asked of me at the Vancouver Wine Festival. Be rest assured that there will be some great wines still produced in Australia. Some wineries will not be producing a wine this year due to smoke taint, most notably Clonakilla from the Canberra region. Greg, great update. Thank you. I love that we're gathered globally here and can update each other. Greg, I'd also love to hear from you what you thought of the Vancouver Wine Festival. What did you take away? What were your favorites? Tom says, I've had some of my volunteer events canceled this month for March. I visit a nursing home with my certified therapy dog. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I guess, you know, nursing homes especially have to be super, super careful because they're the most vulnerable, aren't they? Deb says about the Vancouver Wine Festival, France was the lead country or the theme country, and she drank lots of bubbles. (laughs) But great wines from the U.S., Oregon, Pinot Noir, lovely, she says. Some very elegant Spanish wines. Canada had a great showing, lots of good representation there. Went to the Vintner's Brunch as well. If anyone goes to this festival, the Vintner's Brunch on Sunday is a must. So many good food and wine pairings for three hours. South America is the theme country next year, 2021. Fantastic. Thanks, Deb, for that update. Back to station identification. (laughs) All right. Janet says, Janet's from the Yukon in the Northern Canada, was host to a major circumpolar sports and arts event this month. It was going to attract thousands of young athletes from around the Northern world. 
It's been canceled because of the virus with a major impact on restaurants, hotel, yes. And you know, it's even more impactful too for restaurant workers is often they're either hourly paid and they don't get paid if there's no business. I mean, staying home is a luxury they can't afford and or they're highly dependent on tips. So, you know, that base income is not what pays the bills. It's the tips if you're out front serving customers. Paula Caudill says, I sell wine and my New York and Washington distributors have both canceled my upcoming market visits. My Washington distributors said that downtown Seattle is a ghost town and restaurants are closing. Oh my gosh. I don't know if this is just rosé colored glass thinking, but I'm wondering if there's any upside to this whole thing happening with restaurants developing more infrastructure for home delivery. You know, I know it's not the same thing and it can't replace in restaurant sales, but I wonder if that will pick up as a result of this uh, by necessity that there will be more of an infrastructure to develop and to distribute meals to homes directly. And I guess perhaps services that are already in place, like Skip the Dishes or Uber Eats or whatever, might benefit from this. Who knows, right? Who really knows? And then there's all the meal kit deliveries, you know, Blue Apron and Good Food. I'm not sure what they all are. I guess they might be on an upswing too during this. I know certainly, personally, as I've mentioned, I teach courses online, so I mention this not to be opportunistic, but it is a good time to reevaluate gathering for physical courses, especially when there's so much hand touching. And, you know, I know that you're not eating during the class, but like bread and crackers and stuff. Consider online courses, I think, as a viable alternative. And I think if you've never taken one online, you'll be pleasantly surprised at just how communal they can be. I mean, look at our Facebook group here, how much fun we're having. But with a course, you know, you can also get together in a much more smaller, intimate group setting, but online. And, you know, we also do Zoom video conferencing and that sort of thing. So just in case you're curious, I offer a free class, a pairing class, five wine and food pairing mistakes that can ruin your dinner and how to fix them forever. That's a free video class online from the comfort of your home, safety of your home. You can take that and then decide if you want to continue on with my full course, which is a paid course. Anyway, just for your consideration, let me get back to some of these great comments. Brenda is drinking Patrice Pinot Noir, one of my faves, she says. That's a great Pinot. Great for the money too, Brenda. Jane, they first thought Plavic Mali was related to Zim, but it's different. That's what I thought. And delicious. Stina is a great one. Ooh. Let me get through the rest of your comments here, and then I'm going to have to close this off because I need to go find my peeps, my core students. Elaine Bruce picked up the Givry Premier Cru, Clos St. Pierre. I wonder if that's the one I have. Nope, slightly different one we're tasting tonight in this private group, Elaine, but tell me what you thought. Greg says, the Vancouver Wine Fest was amazing. We poured some amazing wines. The event was well attended and the interest and knowledge are amazing. Many repeat visits. I encourage you all to attend. Wonderful. Gian says, good point with the delivery of food. I must admit I joined HelloFresh last month and I am even still a member of Good Food, so I have many choices. Fantastic. Well, guys, this was a great discussion. I really love hearing from you and Feel free to suggest topics for our next chat. Thank you so much for joining me here. I really, really appreciate it. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye for now. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you like this episode, please tell a friend about it. You'll find links to the video version of this conversation and where you can find us on Facebook Live every second Wednesday at 7 p.m., including tonight, in the show notes at nataliemcclain.com forward slash 69. Finally, if you want to cocoon with me in a glass of wine, join me in a free online video class at nataliemcclain.com forward slash class. You won't want to miss next week when we'll be chatting with California winemaker John Williams of Frog's Leap Winery in Napa Valley 
about the profound impact that organic viticulture and dry farming has on the style of wine you drink. This man has a wonderful sense of humor. You gotta love the imprint on the cork of Frog's Leap bottles, which says, Time's fun when you're eating flies. But he makes seriously great wines. Thank you for taking the time to join me here. I hope something great is in your glass this week. Perhaps a wine that comforts you. You don't want to miss one juicy episode of this podcast, especially the secret full-bodied bonus episodes that I don't announce on social media. So subscribe for free now at nataliemclean.com forward slash subscribe. Meet me here next week. Cheers. Cheers.